And so, yes, we should believe God uh, so that we can be better and be a more positive influence in our lives and with our family. And yes, we should believe God and have greater faith so that we can have faith in others and we can encourage them and motivate them and inspire them. And yes, God is the source of all of that. But the question is, who and what is the object of your faith? When your finances are challenged, even your faith can be challenged. Somebody say amen. amen. When your finances are challenged, uh, the stability of your life can be challenged. But let's see another fact. The Bible says that on one hand, money may answer all things, but he who loves money will never have enough. Notice how we're balancing this off now. And it's also a fact that when finances are challenged, it can cause your faith to increase. Oh, how's that? Remember the woman with the issue of blood? The Bible says that when she spent all that she had, that's when she started pursuing, circumnavigating the crowd to get to Jesus. She had nothing else. In fact, the Bible says that she didn't get any better, but she actually got worse. All of her resources are gone. All of her abilities were gone. And it was at that time that she touched the hem of his garment. I'm simply saying to you that oftentimes when you don't have money, that's the time when you really are hungry for Jesus. Or at least hungry for something. <laughs> something that takes you outside of yourself because you're at the end of the line. Yes, sir. Uh, this statement was made that you never know how much you need God until God is what you need. <laughs> and only he provides a solution. That's a very good statement. And so we cannot say that money is the root of all evil, because if we did not have money, we would not be able to do all the good things that are necessary in life. The Bible never said the, that money was the root of all evil. It was the love of it. And we all know that folk love their money. Amen. <laughs> so how we view our faith is how we view God and serve God. I'm trying to Head towards some points here by keeping it real. What do you mean when you say how we view our faith and how we view our God and serve God? I mean that oftentimes people want to pursue faith so that they can pursue more acclaim on this earth alone. I notice I qualified it by saying alone because obviously we need to have faith in ourselves. We need to have faith in others, and obviously we need to have faith in God. How can a, a, a manager in a business be effective if he or she is not having faith in their employees? How can anybody be successful in life unless, unless they have faith in themselves? So obviously, faith in yourself and faith in others is very important. The problem often develops is that the only reason why we have faith in God so that we can achieve things for our own selfish gain. And why I brought that up is because that is the tenor and the direction of many people who teach the word of God. Meaning that when you have faith in God and when you love God, then God will satisfy all of your financial problems. And where there is no question that God has no problem with money, he does have a problem with people who are pursuing him just for it. And let's put it in the context that you can understand. How would you like it if the only reason why your children pursued you is to get something from you? How does that make you feel? 
as if you don't know that. Say amen. amen. It's not as if you woke up yesterday. <laughs> You've been around the block a few days, a few years, a few centuries. And you can tell when somebody wants something only for what they want. Isn't that in many ways the story of the prodigal son? He wanted what he wanted. And so obviously a parent has no problem in providing resources, whether they be material or any other resource, specifically money, of which many of you all are doing right now for your children. You don't have a problem with that, but you certainly have a problem if that's all they come to you for. If that is the major modus operandi of their lives. And it hurts, doesn't it? Sometimes you still give to them, don't you? But that doesn't mean that doesn't hurt. Sometimes we hurt the heart of God because that's the only time we get serious with him. When we have a financial problem. And he provides. Hallelujah. But can you now see that if that is the direction of your thinking or if that's the subtotal of your teaching, how God's got to fix that? I said, uh, I need to say that again for some of you all. Because you haven't gotten that and you may have gotten some shallow teaching in that subject area, if God has called you, don't you think he's going to fix that? Because he loves you, he cares for you, and he doesn't want you to be preoccupied with the wrong focus. And so, yes, we should believe God uh, so that we can be better and be a more positive influence in our lives and with our family. And yes, we should believe God and have greater faith so that we can have faith in others and we can encourage them and motivate them and inspire them. And yes, God is the source of all of that. But the question is, who and what is the object of your faith? That's what God is looking at. And that's what God is purifying. I, I said earlier that we're going to talk about finance in the context of family, in the context of our faith. And so how we view our family is how we serve our family. How we view our faith is how we serve our God. And let's deal with that just for a moment because let's kind of tunnel down into some of our family issues. Some of you have no problem in being benevolent to your children or your extended loved ones. That's not a problem for you. But isn't it fair to say some family members have an entitlement attitude? Y'all work with me now, don't you? I mean, they, they got their hands out. If you broke the lottery, I know none of y'all play the lottery. I know. I know you don't do that. But if you did, and, you, and you, somebody broke you off of that billion, that... And all your family members knew. Do you think you might get a few calls? <laughs> Maybe just a few calls. This is Michael in San Antonio, Texas. Did you know that we were just thinking about you? I'm sure you were. <laughs> in fact, we've been thinking about you a long time. How are you? And so I'm saying to you that sometimes people hold back uh, from their family members because of this entitlement attitude. Sometimes it's deserving. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we can be too benevolent because we can be naive. Somebody say amen. amen. Sometimes the worst thing we can do is keep giving to our children. Oh, let's, let's tease that just a bit more. Why is it, and this is actually a question, not a rhetorical uh, question or comment, why is it uh, detrimental to keep giving to someone all the time? Pardon me? Uh, uh, you become their drug of choice. Uh, there is no cutting. There is a constant interminable 
umbilical cord between your pocketbook or your purse or your wallet and their needs. In fact, isn't that a potential for raising up an irresponsible person? Because they will never learn how to do on their own because you're enabling them. I know you love them, but when are they going to stretch out on their own? When are they going to learn responsibility? I may be talking to somebody here. Now, how you do that, you need to use the wisdom of God. But what I'm simply trying to tell you that finance is interwoven and interdependent in all our aspects of life. That's all I'm really trying to say. And so if finance is so important for raising up a great church and finance is so important in raising up a great family and finance is important in terms of how we view our faith, then we need to talk about it. That's all I'm really saying. We need to talk about it. And that's why we're teaching it. So it's not looked upon as something that's taboo. You cannot fix a problem until you identify it. And so if you follow the thought process for a moment, is that how we view our faith is how we view our God and how we serve him, and how we view our family is how we serve them. The problem gets to uh, the fore when we talk about money because how we view our finances is also how we serve our finances. Never thought about that. But there's a tendency of us serving money. How so? We'll get to that. <laughs> 